Hello ladies and gentlemen, uh, this video is about my thoughts of how to uh, change some commanders and prestiges because uh, we are all aware that some commanders really need some uh, uh, changes. Uh, I already did uh, some videos but they were kind of hastily made, in the meantime I had a lot of thinking of how to do this so I think this should be pretty pretty good, uh, so uh, please watch it and leave your comments about this, what do you think about these changes, uh, give me your ideas too. Uh, and uh, just one thing, don't uh, go into masteries discussion because the masteries I will leave for uh, some other video. Okay, so let's go. Okay, so first we have Raynor. <coughs> now Raynor is one of the well, weakest commanders. Uh, at least uh, with uh, mutations present, like uh, he's always somewhere at the bottom uh, of the unit tier list. Uh, and one thing that uh, plugs him a lot uh, is uh, the thing that actually seems like uh, his advantage. Raynor is the only commander that has uh, access to orbital commands. Uh, so only commander that has access to mules and scans uh, and while these uh, scans are really good like instant detection wherever it's needed it's also his downside because uh, uh, Raynor is also only commander without any mobile detection and uh, every scan is one less mule so Raynor needs uh, mules for his most powerful plays like massing marines, massing spider mines or going uh, air with P3. Uh, Raynor needs a lot of mules. So uh, I decided to add uh, Raven as a new unit to Raynor and I think Raven would uh, fit uh, Raynor's playstyle a lot. Uh, so we already have uh, the Raynor, uh, uh, Raynor Ravens with uh, uh, Han and Horner, that one is kind of for damage boosting and uh, and like uh, sensor tower. And we also have the Nova one uh, that uh, kind of resembles the Raven as it was in versus mode in the past with the Seeker missile and the repair drone and also railgun turret which is kind of unique. So this Raven should be as it uh, is in versus mode now. I think that would, that would fit the Raynor playstyle the most. So mechanical psionic detector produced from starport with tech lab, 140 HP, cost 100 minerals, 200 gas, and also adjust with P3 cost and effect on tow bar cooldowns. Uh, so abilities, uh, I think it uh, should be cooldown uh, based. Uh, same thing as the Battle Cruiser Yamato, 60 second cooldown for each. I don't want uh, these abilities to be spammed. I want Raven to be support unit, not really the people just go mass Ravens. So anti armor missile, uh, as it is in versus mode, it reduces targeted unit and nearby units armor by three for 15 uh, seconds. Okay, in versus mode, I don't know if it's 15 seconds, but I think it uh, should be. Uh, in co-op like this. Uh, also in versus mode it was nerfed to get just min minus two armor but in co-op everything is stronger so reducing armor by three I think should be good and that should uh, fit the marine play style because uh, marines are units that for fast uh, f uh, fire rate and small amount of damage per hit so redu armor reduction by three would uh, greatly benefit marines. Um, <laughs> but only to one thing is if you only use uh, uh, ravens in the air they would be exposed so you have to be extra careful with them but also it will fit the battle cruiser play because battle cruisers are similar to marines in the way they attack um, so that's it um, on then auto turret uh, like is in the versus not like Amos auto turret that lasts for three whole minutes but they have a very small uh, damage output this one should be uh, with um, high dps but uh, low duration times out after 10 uh, seconds and also interference matrix that disables uh, targeted units attack and all abilities for 15 seconds can target non-heroic mechanical and psionic units this would be really good to disable spellcasters <coughs> which are big plague uh, to uh, Raynor's units uh, because uh, his bio has uh, not uh, uh, 
uh, much HP and mech cannot be uh, self-healed uh, or there is no unit like science vessel for example to repair them so they have to be repaired by SCVs or healed by medics uh, they are also that are also exposed on the ground so uh, yeah, I think this could be really good disabling like battle cruisers um, are constant similar stuff uh, and a research upgrade uh, a tech lab so interference matrix should be a research before it can be used and also enhanced manufacturing abilities same name as Nova <coughs> only that uh, abilities can so store one additional charge not two I think two would be too much and cooldown reduced by 10 uh, seconds so I think this is kind of nice little upgrade in tech uh, lab so this is uh, Raynor I think this uh, change could be a great benefit to Raynor's uh, play. Now we have uh, Artanis. Uh, so uh, I took a little bit of a uh, uh, thing from uh, CXL's uh, book here. Uh, you can check his co-op uh, on Arcade. He did a lot of interesting thing uh, for uh, commanders, for multiple uh, commanders. Uh, so, uh, you know that uh, High Templars can morph into High Archons that have the same abilities, but mostly like Archons are, I mean, stronger than High Templars, but uh, they can be good uh, against some compositions like Devouring Scourge, but they are really not that good of a brawling unit because, mostly because of their uh, short range. So, um, Mostly it's uh, bad to morph High Templars into Archons because you uh, exchange uh, two energy pools for just uh, one. Uh, so uh, I decided to make uh, Archon a little bit uh, more unique. Uh, first of all, maximum energy increased by 50% and also a new ability uh, Plasma Blast. Uh, uh, CXL actually made... Uh, uh, Archons be able to morph into high Archon, into uh, sorry, flying Archons, and uh, those flying Archons uh, have uh, increased range and uh, these two things, and uh, also the uh, health and the damage. I think this would be too powerful. Like uh, I played several games there and just mass Archons and win. So, but uh, this would be too powerful. But I uh, took these two things uh, maximum energy increase by 50 percent so that would, they would have a 300 uh, maximum energy and ability plasma blast same thing as uh, uh, hybrid dominator has but uh, a little bit uh, uh, buff also so after one and a half second charging deals uh, 260 damage to a single target uh, 50% bonus damage versus massive end structures, a double for P1 of course for Valorous Inspirator, uh, range 13 so it will be siege range uh, and energy cost 100, uh, charge cooldown 30 seconds to prevent uh, total abusing with like playing in purple zone of stat uh, statement but okay I mean in, you can still abuse a storm like you can uh, you can <coughs> <coughs> mass uh, storms if you have a uh, uh, Statman ally and play in purple zone. Maximum charge is three, so with full uh, full uh, energy, full charge, the Archon can discharge three of those. Uh, I think this is a really neat uh, addition to Artanis' uh, play style. Okay, now we have Vorazun. Now Vorazun's problem is, uh, like some people like to say, if you don't play P3 you're playing her wrong. I mean, it can be fi uh, fun to play these two prestiges, but really, if you need power, you need to do mutations pretty much always, or like in 99% cases, you choose Keeper of Shadows. So I decided to rework these prestiges. Uh, uh, Spirit of Respite, the one thing that always deters me from playing this prestige is the lack of recall. Lack of recall is really bad. Like recall is so good for Vorazun. Uh, each pylon has uh, a separate cooldown of 60 seconds of mobility. It's not global cooldown, so you have a lot of mobility which you lose. And instead of that, I would have disadvantage that Shadow Guard's time life decreased by 50 uh, percent. So that will be disadvantage here instead of in Keeper of Shadows. Uh, and even uh, 
bigger nerve, like 50% reduction. So I think people will not then uh, rely on shadow guards too much. They will still be like 30 seconds even without mastery uh, to uh, clear the like first attack wave or clear the expansion. So that will be still good for, for that. Uh, but I think then people would uh, uh, use the energy not energy, sorry, time stop, unit speed increase, uh, mastery more, so it will be kind of more more used. I uh, think this is a good change to this prestige. Now, Withering Siphon, uh, this Void Stasis, uh, Dark Coil, Confusion, Disruption, and, and Stasis Ward, uh, Life Draining Effect can now kill. I think that should be uh, good to uh, make this prestige better. And Keeper of Shadows, uh, disadvantage instead of uh, Shadow Guard uh, uh, time life uh, reduction, I would make it that combat unit cost 30% more because if you have a lot of free units that you can uh, spawn every, uh, time every time you use time stop, I think that uh, real units that you produce should cost more. So combat unit cost 30% more. I think it would be a good balance to Vorazun's uh, prestiges. Okay, we have uh, <coughs> Abator. Now, the limitless, the thing that you need a double amount of biomass to get ultimate evolution uh, is the thing that uh, actually makes this prestige inferior uh, to the others. It can be strong, of course, late game, but getting there is problematic on most maps. Uh, and of course the thing that biomass is weaker and they had to make it weaker because if they didn't then it would be like assets hoarder on steroids imagine you have like you disable the the option to evolve into ultimate evolution and you have like 200 biomass unit imagine like muta with uh, 960 <laughs> <laughs> hp and like uh quadruple the attack speed and 200% life leech, like that kind of unit will be practically uh, unkillable. You make three of those and you kill pretty much every map. So uh, I decided to make Queens uh, to add deep tunnel ability to Queens. This is kind of uh, seemingly minor thing, but it's actually, it would actually be huge because then Queens would be able to follow Brutalisks whenever they go to uh, pick biomass immediately when Brutalisks kill stuff, to heal Brutalisks until they become Brutalisks themselves. Uh, and also it would open uh, some pretty uh, good uh, luring opportunities like your deep tunnel uh, behind enemy lines somewhere <coughs> where you usually cannot place toxicness there and lure. And <coughs> some people say that uh, luring is hard. I mean, uh, we had uh, one guy that uh, uh, proposed uh, <clears throat> that you get Brutalisk at the start, like one or two free Brutalisk, or not really at the start, but like four minute mark, where like a hero commander, uh, when the time when other, most other commander, uh, hero commanders spawn, but that would actually kind of be also pretty late, four minutes, like uh, when you have Void Rifts, you need Brutalisk like, uh, up to like two minutes, uh, 20, when first Rift spawn, or like two, maybe two seconds, a uh, few seconds uh, uh, later, uh, and you can do it uh, on most maps against uh, most enemy compositions, if, uh, most enemy races, if you know how, and this is really not <coughs> about the skill, about the speed, j uh, just knowledge, so you can learn how to do it, practice, I look, uh, I look at myself, you know, uh, if I can do it, you can, because I'm not uh, some uh, very fast player, uh, I mean, I can play relatively fast. I mean, if you cannot play this game above like four, maybe 40 APM, that probably this game is not for you. But uh, I'm not like, I don't know, Lyle Erin, for example, if uh, uh, I would be good as him and look uh, what I can do, that probably it would be wrong because what he can do like 99.5% people cannot. But... Uh, I think this is something that everybody can do, so luring is not really a hard thing, and this would really be a good addition uh, to uh, Abatur's playstyle, like it will make Limitless a lot, lot better. A la rock. 
So, uh, we have this P1 Alarak Artifice, Artificer of Souls. Now, arguably this is the strongest late game prestige in the game, because uh, many people think that this is actually prestige for robo, like buffing uh, your robo units with the supplicants. Okay, you can also do it for stalkers, uh, <coughs> but it is actually for <coughs> mixed play, ascendance plus robo, because every time you sacrifice your supplicant uh, to ascendant it will buff that ascendant but if it will also buff the nearby uh, robo units you get the double buff uh, but this uh, is expensive if you can get to like uh, a late game to like 10 ascendants plus 10 rat walkers fully buffed then you have very very uh, strong army but it is expensive getting there in our early game you just have alarak that's weaker because the uh, abilities damage is reduced by 50 percent uh, and you also then need uh, like ascendants cost a lot of uh, resources uh, especially a lot of gas robo units too and then you have to uh, get all tech uh, structures uh, and get the upgrades for both ascendants and broad walkers and that's all uh, pretty much expensive so uh, yeah, i think it would be good okay upgrade it should be upgrade and research uh, uh, cost reduced by 20 percent i didn't uh, gonna make it too much because it's still very strong uh, prestige but a little bit help to get there to that late game composition easier so upgrade and research cost reduced by 20 percent for nova i would rework tactical dispatcher so Instead of tactical airlift cooldown uh, uh, reduced by what 75%, I would uh, remove it completely. Uh, but instead, tactical air airlift would cost uh, more, 50% more. That's 300 minerals instead of 200. And Griffin airstrike would be completely removed at it, as it was when this uh, prestige was first made. But then the Blizzard soon uh, actually. Uh, got griffin airstrike back but with um, uh, increased uh, cooldown so i think that it should be like griffin removed so instead of like having the just to press button and you have that uh, airstrike that is 500 damage and instantly kills the attack wave uh, uh, you would actually have to uh, fight the all the attack waves but uh, you would be more mobile so uh, if you are going some uh, styles that cost a lot of gas you have a lot of minerals to spare you would be uh, you would have a lot of mobility because it would uh, cost 300 uh, minerals without um, without uh, any cooldown and i think that uh, could be really really good because this uh, prestige is not really uh, very useful now not a lot of people are using it uh, the other two are really good so i think this would make this prestige uh, more attractive now we have stukov's plague warden in my opinion and in the opinion of most people the most useless prestige in the game so uh, i for this also took a little bit of a thing from uh, cxl co-op uh, uh, not the whole thing because uh, cxl there buffed the compound uh, into stratosphere that would be too op that you can where you can practically win most maps just with using compound stuff but uh, uh, i would like make uh, uh, infested banshees uh, get tactical jump with 60 second uh, cooldown uh, can load up to 16 infested infantry that already exist of course and can launch their cargo at ground target but also infested colonist compound has 15 percent chance of spawning volatile infested and with mastery uh, that can go up to 30 percent so that would be the thing these two things i think it would make this prestige kind of uh, viable actually even pretty good and disadvantage would be that uh, infested bunkers cannot uh, unload or produce units so buffing the benches and the compound stuff uh, uh, at the expense of the infest uh, ranged infantry so uh, <clears throat> of course uh, like the, if they would not be able to produce units then uh, of course uh, uh, they should be made like that they cannot unload because if you accidentally unload that bunker cannot produce then of course you have em empty bunker the whole game that is worth worthless and of course and of course also infested marines uh, 
they are produced from barracks, uh, timed life decreased by 50%. So this should be pretty, pretty good a change to plug warden. Now we have Phoenix P3, uh, Unconquered Spirit, uh, the least used prestige by myself and also I think by uh, uh, most people. I think this is actually the least used prestige uh, of all of them. I pretty much never see anybody play uh, this prestige. So uh, I think that instead of uh, concentrating the prestige around the champions dying, uh, uh, it should be the disadvantage that Phoenix suits are unavailable because uh, if champions uh, have a normal uh, attack range and additional uh, life and uh, shields like in P0, then of course uh, if you don't lose anything good because you defeated enemies and you didn't lose a unit so it's, it's good, but if you lose something... Uh, uh, like if you lo uh, lose host shells, you got uh, the Avenging Protocol that is doubled in this prestige. Uh, and uh, if the champion dies, then you of course, uh, you get even bigger effect uh, by Avenging Protocol and also refound. Uh, so that's uh, still a uh, buff in uh, com comparison to P0. Uh, and for that, this advantage should be Phoenix suits are unavailable. So you have a uh, prestige, unlike uh, P2, because with this, uh, as it is now, uh, it's uh, just weaker P2. Uh, but uh, now uh, you have the prestige that you can actually fight with the whole army, uh, and it is stronger than P0. Uh, I think that could be uh, really good because. Uh, uh, then it would be fair compared to P2 because uh, sometimes when you have like uh, when you get strong and uh, strong comp air composition, special air composition, ground composition, like you pretty much kill everything with Caldalis. But if you're going up against like uh, Skytos uh, Tempest or uh, like uh, even like carriers or so, then uh, I think sometimes P2 uh, can be problematic. Uh, uh, this would be pretty pretty good as kind of all around uh, uh, strong army composition i think this is fair han and horner now like Raynor, i think han and horner overall uh, needs a little bit of buff uh, so han and horner is slow on getting the economy up because uh, uh, you don't have uh, like automatic gases, SCVs are a normal production speed and also they need to do a lot of stuff like building galleons, building this and building that. So uh, yeah, Han and Horner uh, goes uh, slow on eco, so I would make his and her supply, uh, that's level 8 upgrade, uh, also allow to double SCV production, it kind of would fit the lore. Uh, and uh, also uh, new unit planetary fortress because Han and Horner actually lacks static defense uh, against air. They only, they have just normal missile turrets and uh, like against ground you don't have have like what just units like with of mines with long cooldown. So uh, I think planetary fortress uh, would uh, fit them very well, especially because uh, no commander has planetary fortress. Only Amon has planetary fortresses. So built from command center, armored structure, requires engineering bay, cost 150-150, damage uh, 40, range 7, attack speed 2, okay, normally it's uh, a range 6 in versus mode, <coughs> but then with uh, you have high sec auto tracking upgrade, which enhances range by 1, but here like it should be 7, like uh, range same as normal static defense uh, range, so that's it and also galactic gun runners prestige which is pretty much uh, only useful uh, if you, for sit at home strategy on rifts to core hall and you just sit at home and uh, bomb uh, the shards with uh, uh, strike fighters but on that map on that map we already have a lot of commanders in my opinion probably too many commanders that can kind of cheese by just uh, uh, getting uh, 
that done <coughs> from a distance like earth splitters like the hakas creeper hosts so uh i would make galactic uh, gun runners a little bit more attractive by making uh, the same thing as rain or p3 uh, bombing platforms now increase top bar cooldown rates by one percent per supply used except for their own cooldowns uh okay uh that would be harder to do i mean uh, slower to go than rain or p3 because uh, they cost like uh, like each uh, bombing platform uh, is just two supply and cost 200 uh, gas in this prestige so uh yeah that for example for just 10 supply you need uh, like uh, a thousand uh, gas which for rhino p3 is much uh, uh, less but uh, this is okay because it would be too op actually if uh, like having both uh, all mag mines and uh, uh, call in the fleet and the space station uh, s too much of the uh, re cooldown reduction so i think this is fair for Zeratul, I would just make a minor uh, change and knock uh, soon. Uh, increase super clock duration by 5 seconds to be uh, 20 seconds to actually match Vorazun's uh, time stop because if you look like time stop is something that uh, disables everything uh, on the map except uh, most uh, mission objectives. Uh, for 20 seconds, the super clocks just uh, super cloaks. Uh, uh, allied units uh, in a targeted area by 15 seconds so I think it should be the same duration so uh, 20 duration 20 seconds duration for uh, super cloak and finally statement now lazy part of my soul is uh, already crying about this and probably a lot of you would cry too if this goes through but uh, I think uh, actually you should uh, agree that uh, this has to be done change has to be made to best body because super duper gary is just too strong the thing that gary provides support like the the support that gary provides for uh, uh, his army is already a strong thing on its own and then you have that unit with 2000 hp that deletes everything with e orbs and has a uh, uh, 90 damage per hit and also can be made uh, if you use zerglings and zerglings die and um, you have with full 20 stacks of best oil uh, it uh, fires around three times per second which is like 270 dps and it, it's like crazy so instead of that <coughs> i would actually make gary to be even useful for support instead of being just outright uh, one uh, one unit for the win you know so uh instead of having a double hp and damage i would make gary ability cooldowns reduced by 40 percent now master is not additive because with uh, uh full mastery it would be 40 plus 30 70 percent i think it would be too much so mastery would be applied after the prestige so it would be 59 percent uh, uh cooldown reduction with uh, uh, master is for example for igorb that would be like now it is 30 percent no uh, 30 percent sorry 30 seconds uh, normal cooldown with master is 21 second cooldown for igorb and with these changes it would be uh, 18 seconds without mastery and uh, 12.6 seconds with mastery i think this is fair you would uh, be able to use igorb more uh, and it could be useful like uh, because Igor will often overkill so now it would uh, uh, not be so powerful but it would be uh, uh, used more uh, and um, also other things like uh, like over more overcharge means like for example on Temple of the Pest you could overcharge on ally side and the teleport to your side and uh, defend there so it would be more uh, supportive also more teleports more mobility that way and more gary zones uh, and gary zones with this uh, like with uh, this prestige and full mastery would actually be available uh, like cooldown would be i think only 15.9 uh, seconds so you would have gary zone uh, uh, more than half of the whole playing time and because of that i would go more hardcore on disadvantage too so 
uh, Gary cannot exit stat zone. This is because Gary's uh, movement is not smooth. You know that Gary moves like in installments, as I like to say it. So, <laughs> uh, so to prevent Gary from being disabled, because if Gary loses stat zone, uh, he can still lose stat zone. Uh, like when a satellite is destroyed, or if you can uh, use Gary Zone and then you get stranded, Gary Zone expires and you don't return home or teleport in time, Gary will, would be completely disabled. Uh, so, he completely means like uh, 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 wouldn't be able to use any abilities, ability cooldowns would also be paused and would not be able to attack. So, completely unpowered, uh, uh, unless powered by Mecha Infestor. That would, I think, be a really cool thing to do, like uh, we'll be able to exit the zone uh, if uh, it would be unleash uh, <coughs> by unleash of the Infestor, like uh, the, 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 the charging protocol, because I think charging protocol is not used enough. People mostly use that to charge uh, Infestors, like Infestor charge each other, but <coughs> It is actually a very powerful ability that not only charges like 50, uh, 50 uh, energy or 50 energy or energy instantly and 200 more uh, over the course of 20 seconds, but it also heals unit by 150 HP instantly and all at 600 additional health restored over 20 seconds, 750 HP um, every 20 seconds. That uh, is actually pretty powerful and it also uh, reduces uh, the cooldown by 25%. So it can be used uh, uh, on Gary to additionally uh, reduce uh, cooldown on his ability. Now I think yeah, Gary Zone, I'm pretty sure Gary Zone is not affected because it's a master ability. Uh, I'm not sure about teleport and uh, overcharge, but uh, the Gary Zone, uh, the, sorry, Gary Zone, so uh, the uh, Igorb is definitely affected, so uh, this is actually a pretty good thing uh, to have, uh, but you still uh, have to be very careful, like if you go on a trip behind enemy lines, like let's use Garrison and go there forever for like any reason, and then lose Garrison there, not place any overcharge uh, and then any satellite to overcharge you lose Gary zone then Gary would be stranded and enemy would uh, just uh, kill it easily and if there is no enemy there to kill it then it would probably be even worse because you you would have Gary stranded there uh, until you find a way to spread stat zone there or get the investor there to power it and teleport back home so I think that would be a really good change to best body okay that's it guys please comment uh, and also i repeat if you have skills to do this if you have programming skills and know how to make a patch your help would really be welcome because we need to do something about this i am fortunately not a programmer it's too late for me to learn i'm a relatively old man and i have other things to do uh, uh, i would gladly help like uh, having ideas like this and also testing stuff but we need programmers. Thanks for watching.